a precision oscillator to test all kinds of coils between say 200 kilohertz and 10 megahertz. I've published also another oscillator with the same aim, but that was made with a bipolar transistor. And the problem with a bipolar transistor is that when the frequency changes at the input from the oscillator, the capacitance between the base and ground also changes. So it's frequency dependent. The capacitance here is frequency dependent and that's a problem. Because then the measurements are not linear. The field effect transistor does not suffer from that problem. And I've used here a BF245B. You can also use a BF245C. Very simple circuit. Two outputs, one to the scope and one to the counter. Because when I connect both the counter and the scope to the same output, uh, the amplitude goes too much down. So here's a small cap, very small cap, that does not have a, a lot of influence at the output from the oscillator. Here there is a coil, that's this coil. It has approximately 330 turns. I call it ape hair. It was wound on a plastic tube, no ferrite, from approximately 6 millimeters in diameter. And it's very easy to make, thin wire, isolated copper wire. Um, here we have two capacitors. These two capacitors set, set the frequency band where it works. When you change them, you can also go to higher frequencies, higher than approximately uh, 10 megahertz. Here I have put uh, in the circuit a 50 picofarad capacitor. And the reason is that some coils don't have uh, a lot of capacitance from their own. This coil for instance has a capacitance from its own. And the reason is that all the windings are very closely together. That means that there is, for instance, an, an in internal capacitance from, say, 20 picofarad or so, or 30 perhaps. And with other coils, this coil, for instance, does not have such a big internal capacitance. I think it's approximately 5 picofarad or so. That's why I have used here that um, uh, bridge capacitor that bridges the coil in the test. Um, I've mounted here a switch and an extra capacitor to get to the very low frequency band from say 200 kilohertz. You have to close that switch. In that case the oscillator also works on low frequencies. So I want to demonstrate it now. Here is the a 455 kilohertz filter. And here on the counter we see that it works on, that I've tuned it in to approximately 450 uh, kilohertz. When I uh, turn the core from the coil, I can precisely set it to uh, 455 kilohertz. And the good thing from this oscillator, it has a very pure waveform. So you can also use um, this oscillator as a VFO in a radio. camera constantly zooms in and out. Sorry for that. The schematic again. Easy to make and with the 2K potentiometer you can vary the voltage between say 3 volts or 0 volt and uh, approximately 90 volts. It works good when we use here a voltage from 19 volts. And you can see that on the scope when I tune here this potentiometer, the amplitude goes down and the oscillator stops. But here it works again. I think this is approximately uh, 15 volts or so. So let's do some other tests. This coil, for instance, where does it work? What's the frequency? Connect it now to the oscillator. 
and we see that the frequency is 2.4 megahertz. And also here, very good waveform. So, um, you can also test with this oscillator, though uh, not always, uh, crystals. This crystal for instance, a 2 megahertz crystal approximately, also works on this oscillator. That's very peculiar and even some uh, ceramic filters. This is a ceramic filter on say 455 kilohertz. Also works when I connect it to the oscillator. And when it works you can be absolutely sure that your crystal or your uh, ceramic filter, ceramic filter is ok. I'll connect the crystal now. By the way, not all crystals work. Only some crystals work. And uh, I don't know why, but connected now the crystal. I have to switch it somewhat. Hmm. At the moment, oh yes, here it is. Here is the crystal oscillating. So, peculiar. And of course it has to do with the properties from a crystal. The replacement schematic from a crystal is that from a coil with an extremely high Q. And we can also see here that the, the crystal is quite ok. I read 2095.00 uh, kilohertz and here it is 2094. 0.94 kilohertz. So very good. And not all crystals work. You have to test it yourself. So a useful circuit. It only has one small problem and it is that sometimes, as far as I could see, the circuit starts to oscillate on a harmonic from the coil. So not on the ground frequency for which the coil was made. But it's something to test, to do experiment with. And um, I wish you luck.